It sure does seem that people care more about being right than they care about changing the world or being happy. And on one level, we could trace it back to schooling and the rewards you get for producing the right answer. But I think it goes even deeper than that to the way that we raise children in this society, controlling them by withholding approval and shaming them or rejecting them for doing things that we don't like. Basically, if you don't do what I like, then you're a bad boy. What's wrong with you? How could you? That shame then gets internalized over time as self-rejection. Because what a young mammal wants the most is to be accepted by the parent. Young mammals are totally dependent on the mother. So abandonment is a death sentence. So to control a child, you can leverage that primal fear of abandonment. And it works for a while. But really what you are doing is training children to be slaves to their fear, to their insecurity. And to have this internalized self-rejection, which drives a lifelong quest to like myself, to accept myself. Well, how can I give myself permission to like myself. One way is to be right, or to be good, to have a code of ethics that I tell myself that I adhere to, so I'm good, unlike that person because they voted for Donald Trump. But me and a few people in my tribe, and let's form a little internet group together and tell each other how right we are and how good we are and how we're on team good in this global war between good and evil. <sighs> now I get to like myself. Now I get to approve of myself because this is such a primal need. This is all conditional self-approval. It's not intrinsic self-approval. So it only lasts as long as the let's talk about how right we are party lasts. And then you need more, and more, and more, and more. So as long as that's there, the thirst for validation will be endless. People who are highly conditioned to self-rejection will be easy to manipulate. Because all you have to do is find some way to associate their self-approval with something that you want them to do. Someone carrying a lot of self-rejection will inevitably turn it toward other people in the form of judgment, in the form of violence, in the form of rejecting the other. On one level, it's to elevate the self by rejecting the other. You get to feel good about yourself if you're dominating somebody else, if you're ridiculing somebody else. kind of new territory for us to let go of the formula of punishment and shame and reward and conditional rejection and conditional approval. Like, what do we do when we're not going to do that anymore? It's not like we just totally step back and let the kid just do whatever he wants. So you start to ask, how do children learn behavior? One way is to allow them to experience consequences of what they do that aren't necessarily coming from you. When my son was a boy, I gave him a knife. And I said, this knife is sharp. If you're not careful, you'll cut yourself. Well, he wasn't careful and he cut himself. So what did he learn? Two things. One, he learned that knives are dangerous. You could cut yourself. The second thing he learned is that dad's pretty smart. Maybe I should listen to dad. Now, if I had said, Matthew, don't dare touch that knife or you'll be in big trouble. And he touched it maybe, and I hit him. 
he would have learned that knives aren't dangerous. Dad is dangerous. And then when he did, maybe in the future, surreptitiously use a knife and not get cut, the second thing he learns is dad's full of shit. Just like when dad said, don't climb up the slide backward, don't climb on that jungle gym, don't do this, don't do that, it's dangerous. Smoking pot, that'll rot your brain. And then he he smokes pot, he does this, he does that, and he's okay, unless I caught him, unless he gets in trouble. So what our parenting does is it conditions people to think that if they don't get in trouble, if they can evade the surveillance of authority, then there are no consequences. But one thing that my children learned is that they're trustworthy. It's like, yeah, I trust you with this knife. I trust you with this bicycle. I trust you to go outside by yourself unsupervised. If you're constantly trying to prevent them from doing those things, you're signaling you are not trustworthy. So to heal this wound of self-rejection is really a profound undertaking. And as it heals, you become less manipulable. You become better able to serve a mission that's not the mission of looking good to yourself and others. But it's the mission of actually creating a change in the world.